Yes, 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 we're back. <laughs> Welcome to the Funk Reporter. Welcome to Wrestling Wednesday because it's Wednesday somewhere. <laughs> and slight changes to how I talk about wrestling now because, quite frankly, Raw, I hate you. I'm not going to talk about Raw right now. I'm just going to talk about what I think is worth talking about and it's definitely not Raw these days. So, Raw... You're fired! <laughs> At least I was able to say this. So, back to not chronological discussions. I mean, if they make sense, yes, but back to let's talk about what was fun this week and maybe what was okay. -ish. But fun was a W. Not everything, but lots of it. And uh, just making sure I see all, all my notes here because, of, as always, lots of stuff happening in this one hour, 45 minutes, or however long that show is. So we started things off with Brian Cage, the machine. Speaking of the machine, Lucha Underground apparently coming back. Huh, be cool. AW and Lucha Underground. Ah, oh, that would be awesome. Ah, let's see about this. So Brian Cage defeating Hangman Adam Page and uh, hey Hangman, get a new intro. I still don't like it. I never liked it. Still don't like it. So um, well, yeah, Hangman came out, of course, um, was all baby -facey. <laughs> Um was hanging in there quite well, of course, but eventually Brian Cage was just, uh, well, too much in this case and, well, had a little bit of help, just a little bit of help because they, Hangman Adam Page got jumped before the bell even rang and this was enough. Uh, to hurt him in a way that would impact the match later on, obviously, uh, which then gave Brian Cage his win over Hangman Adam Page. So I think it was well done. I liked it. Page was selling well. Um, the attack was ruthless um, by Cage. Fits very well in the story, fits the characters. I'm still wondering where, where Adam Page is gonna go eventually, because then we still have the Dark Order, of course, like sticking up for him. Um, while Team Taz, of course, is on the side of, of Brian Cage. Now, let's see where this goes, but overall, a um, good start. And Cage picking up a win is, of course, something something uh, positive here because they need to build him again a little bit more so that he becomes this big, huge threat once again. Then we saw the tag team match, and if the Seidel brothers, Seidel bros, would win against the asshole bros, <laughs> The Young Bucks, uh, they will get a championship match next time. However, uh -huh, you, can, you can you guess what happens, but uh, the match was pretty cool actually, which you would expect between the Young Bucks, like the I don't know, Spot Monkeys versus the Seidels. I don't know what, what's, what's the synonym for Spot Monkey, Spot, I don't know, whatever, who are also like jumpers, high flyers, and so on. Um, Matt Seidel, of course, not doing focusing more on also the, the grappling a little bit, right? So it's like this story around him that he used to be the super high flyer and he now also uses uh, grappling and that's why he's getting so much better. And there were a few moments where you thought that the Seidel bros would have it. Um, but yeah, but I try to find a smooth transition, <laughs> but there is no smooth transition. So the Seidel bros, Looked like they had it, um, but then the Young Bucks countered with a low blow, <laughs> like a nice low blow. <laughs> was it Mad or was it? I'm not sure. I think it was Mad, wasn't it? Who then actually like sold it, like he was just they're actually like punching in the nether region uh, of one of the sidles. I think it was Mad, uh, sidle Mad on Mad Crime, <laughs> if I can say that. And his face was like, ooh. Uh, that was interesting. They had everything in there. Um, violence too in between some crazy spots. Uh, I liked it. It was it was it was cool. Uh, what I also liked was Don Caddis on commentary calls, and I wrote it down to not miss misspeak here. Uh, when the low blow happened by I think Matt Jackson, uh, Don Callis said 
It was a, a, a what a phenomenal athletic maneuver. <laughs> Fantastic. Those are the things you love Don Callis for. That was awesome. So it was a fun match. The Young Bucks retain. Um, then eventually uh, Kasarian comes out. Uh, says like, yeah, we are still here. Uh, uh, we still didn't lose. We are undefeated since, since December. We are coming for your titles. And we used to be friends, but now you are just assholes. And we are going to get those titles and get you out of here. So that was... It was a message then sent. So I guess we've got a match here. Yes, that should be fun. I don't want to see them. I don't want to see the Young Bucks kill the tag team, though. Hmm, let's see about this. That was fun, though. It was good. The promo worked as well afterwards. So heel Young Bucks are the best Young Bucks. Uh, we then had Orange Cassidy, and I would put my hands in my pockets if you could see that, versus Penda Cero Miedo. It looks kind of coolish when he does it, when I do it, it doesn't look that cool, it doesn't feel that cool, right? Zero. Yeah. Maybe it's the face paint. Maybe it's, it, I must be the face paint. Not, not the fact that he's a fantastic wrestler, I must be the face paint. Next podcast with face paint. And then it goes zero. Yeah. Well, um, it, was, it was fun, it was really fun, it was, I said it, I said it a lot when I, when I review AW, right? but it's really fun. Um, Nice back and forth, like Orange Cassidy starting off the match in a way that only Orange Cassidy starts matches off. But oh, well, actually, what was hilarious was, this, if you watch it, you know what I'm saying. It was the start when um, Penta got all in his face and he takes off his glove, right, slowly, and then takes the glove, throws it to the outside, and then his manager catches it. Uh, and then he goes like, Zero Miedo, and it goes in, in the face of Orange Cassidy. And Orange Cassidy then counters by taking off the glasses, <laughs> slowly pulling them down, folding them, throwing them out to Trent. Trent does not catch the glasses, <laughs> and, but looks like he had. And then Orange Cassidy puts slowly his hands in the pocket and then starts the kicks to the shin um, against Penta El Cero Miedo. And, but then start things off with like the, the flippy shit. And even an arm drag without arms with his hands in his pockets. Fantastic. Um, Penta comes back, of course, all violent, um, has the upper hand for a while. Then uh, Orange Cassidy counters back and forth. Penta then again um, gets the upper hand because his manager distracts uh, or tries to distract Orange Cassidy. But luckily, uh, Orange Cassidy just throws him in into the ring. Then Penta tries to use this to his advantage, but Trent has the microphone and gives it to Orange Cassidy, and Orange Cassidy punches uh, Penta with the mic and gets the win. That was pretty fun. This was really fun. Also fun was um, when Orange to go, Orange went for um, uh, Tope Suicida, and Penta just caught him with his arms in a gorilla press, and just even took one arm, arm down and a one-handed gorilla press. That was fun. That was a really cool match. I enjoyed it a lot. I was smiling a lot. Um, yeah, good job. That was that was just fun. Um, Orange Cassidy with the with, with the interesting victory here, I believe. So let's see where this goes from here. I liked it a lot. Um, then we had the inner circle versus the pinnacle in a parlay. Uh, basically means everybody gets to cut a promo back and forth. Nice. Um, It was nice to hear the rest of the teams also cut some promos. I think Sean Spears started out like strong, like yeah, and, and had a few good lines, but then just Sammy Guevara came back with like, you're a failure. Ever since you came to AEW, you're a failure. And quite frankly, where you worked before, you've been a failure there too. <laughs> and <laughs> he's not wrong, right? And then this, this kind of shut, shut off uh, Spears. Then we had uh, the tag teams going at each other as well. Uh, that, was, that was nice. We had Wardlow and Jack Hager, the big guys, not saying much though. Um, but they were staring very intensely at each other. <laughs> and then of course we had, we had MJF going at Jericho again and then Jericho in the end retorting MJF. And in really like good old Jericho fashion, just tearing him a new one. Um, that was great. That was really like MJF with the cockiness first and then just Jericho like just tearing into MJF. That was fun. 
The only thing that wasn't fun was that every one of those people cutting promos mentioned that it's blood and guts on May 5th a thousand times. I think every second word that Jericho said was blood and guts on May 5th, we're gonna show you. And then on blood and guts on May 5th, we gonna. And there's blood and guts May 5th because we are blood and guts. I mean, it was intense, it was heated, it was good, but this, this 7,000 times blood and guts on May 5th was a little bit much. Other than that, those two factions, of course, led by MJF and, and Y2J, Chris Jericho, it's just awesome. I actually, also when Jericho came out with the pinnacle wheel on like motorcycles, like, like a rock band, and then the crowd, the, the, the crowd, the other AW um, talent and so on in the audience, keep singing the Fosse theme for Jericho, Judas in my mind. That's just cool. That's, that's really cool. I, I like it. I actually watched Judas in my mind right afterwards a few times and was singing along with it. So yeah, looking forward to seeing how this culminates at Blood and Guts on May 5th. <laughs> um, this whole thing led to, by, by the way, for, led to the Pineapple, um, the Pinnacle, getting the advantage um, at their match at Blood and Guts so they can start things off and then Sammy will be the first one to take on the pinnacle for the inner circle because he got all heat and said I take on everybody anytime any place give it to me I fight everybody all right after that we then saw Eddie Kingston and John Moxley and well first Eddie Kingston and he wanted a match with uh with Kenny of course but Kenny was like just because you ask for the champ doesn't mean you get the champ you have to fight him first and then there was Michael Nakasawa in the ring sitting there with like a laptop, like a, like a, like a worker. And then he attacked uh, Kingston, but Kingston just yeah, quickly recovered. Went after Nakasawa, of course. Uh, then they had him like in a spot where he was about to break Nakasawa's ankle with a, with a chair and try to threaten Kenny. He's like, if you don't come in here, I'm gonna break his ankle. And Kenny was like, <gasps> go ahead, I don't care. We have more goons like him. Bring out the next goon. And then the next goon, came out, but he was thrown out of the back. You're like, okay, and I know what's gonna happen. John Moxley coming out, attacking Kenny, like uh, brawling Kenny to the ring. Then they both gang up on Kenny. He's down, they put a chair around his ankle, threatened to break his ankle now until Don Callis gives in and says, okay, what do you want? And they said, we want a tag team match next week between us two and Kenny and Michael Nakasawa. It's a bit random, of course. I understand you want to fight Kenny, but why Michael Nakasawa? Nah, it's a bit, it's a bit random. It's a bit random. Um, you're not a big fan of that 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 angle. I mean, I like Eddie Kingston's promos. I like John Moxley. I like Kenny Omega. Um, I even like Michael Nakasawa. This was just a little bit, um, a little bit, I don't know, yeah. pulled out of thin air, basically. And uh, we then saw the alien Chris Stadlander versus uh, Penelope Ford. And actually, Penelope Ford did, did quite well. It was pretty cool. Um, then, however, she countered uh, one flip. Uh, Chris Dadlander countered one flip by Penelope Ford, caught her, hit a finisher, and then that, that was it. So that was, that was um, nice, but it was not that long. Then we saw a brawl between the factory and the Nightmare family. And, well, yeah, that was a lot. <laughs> um, See, I don't know what to say. There was a bit, there was a bit WWE style, and then, I mean, they all look good. They all look like, I'm just not invested. They look like badasses or like, well, heels, a holes, and um, they're doing what they're supposed to do. But I'm just not the biggest fan of like how they're built right now. Even though so they try to um, get like this guy Anthony or Gogo, right? <laughs> Sorry for mis maybe pronouncing it really over because like his I hate his punch to the gut or whatever to the ribs the, what, but Billy Gunn came out like all all taped up on around the ribs and stuff so okay they're selling it but I'm still still not invested in it and of course uh yeah Cody Rhodes returned of course he came out of a big bus that said nightmare the American nightmare Cody you could even see him standing into the closed door like the, through the window and the door opens and oh no it's Cody <laughs> it's Cody coming out of his own bus who would have thought it? That was really, that was WWE style there. AW, not a big fan of this. I'm sorry, that was not your best um, performance here. 
What we then saw at the end was Darby Allen versus 10. That was cool. 10 uh, outpowering Darby Allen in the beginning, more power. That was cool. Sting was there in the corner again of Darby Allen, of course. But it was all nice. Um, then Darby was like, he almost looked like he lost. And Darby Allen was like, a, he got attacked uh, by Scorpio Sky in between um, also. Um, 10 didn't see it first. And he's like, why is he down? Well, uh, he, 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 he hesitated, but then he's like, okay, maybe I have to. Then he tried to um, he capitalize on it, almost pinned Darby, but Darby was able to roll 10 up and to retain, which was cool. Um, yeah, then after that, it all, well, then Darby Allen took um, the armband that says um, Brody from 10 and just held it up, celebrated Brody Lee one more time. Uh, so everybody respected each other. And then uh, Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page hit the ring and tried to attack well, Darby and Sting. So Scorpio Sky attacking Sting in the figure four Stinger, whatever submission hold, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so that's basically the, the next feud here, uh, starting right here. Overall, it was fun. I liked the beginning. I wasn't a fan of the Nightmare uh, Factory thingy. Everything else was quite cool and very entertaining, I believe. But also was quite cool and entertaining this week um, was SmackDown. SmackDown wasn't wasn't that bad, I believe. Um, I like, but I'm, I'm a Cesaro fan, so obviously I'm happy with Cesaro now getting uh, a better spot in on, on the card and everywhere. Um, I still not a big fan of the Seth Rollins heel persona that he still has, like the savior kind of thing. I still still not behind this even after I don't know one or two years in. Um, of course, he claims that thanks to him, Cesaro fulfilled his potential. Um, so he takes takes credit for uh, for Cesaro's moment, which was which fits the persona, but it's still like a bit yeah, forced. Of course, and Cesaro comes out saying he wants to prove that he can beat Rollins a second time. And then Jey Uso came out and got in the mix and said, uh, Cesaro disrespected Roman Reigns. <laughs> so this then leads us to a tag team match, basically, because somewhere in the back, there's still Teddy Long having fun, going like, player, 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 player. You and you, we will see who is the best in a tag team match. And well, yeah, tag team match between uh, Jey Uso, of course, uh, Seth Rollins, and Cesaro, and The Undertaker, <laughs> Daniel Bryan. <laughs> Not The Undertaker, it's just because I was talking about Teddy Long. So, after winning the tag team match, and Bryan on the mic called out Roman Reigns, of course, um, Jey Uso uh, attacking uh, Cesaro, <sighs> and then eventually Roman Reigns come out to kind of save, protect um, Uso from Cesaro. There was like actually a commercial break, which I wrote into my notes because I found it a bit weird here. Um, and then they interview Uso about what, what happened and he's, he's still royal to Reigns and said, Cesaro was going to get destroyed by Reigns in the future. I wrote it down here. Um, and then Paul Heyman was also there and he then cut a promo later on saying, Reigns would answer Cesaro's challenge by the end of the night. <laughs> I hate it when they do this, like as if you wouldn't know what's gonna happen. So then at the end, just to yeah, wrap things up, uh, Reigns came out and then told Cesaro he's the one that issues the challenge and then challenged Brian to a title match. So not Cesaro issues the challenge. So he challenged Brian to a title match next week on SmackDown. And there's a stipulation if Brian loses, he never wants to see him again. I, I read this from my notes. He said he never wants to see him again. So it doesn't mean Brian has to retire. So he just says, I never want to see him again. So Daniel Bryan to Raw confirmed. So then, um, yeah, what I said, Brian and Cesaro defeating Uso and Seth Rollins. Um, because that's, that's just how, how it goes, right? We, didn't, we even saw Cesaro with like a yes, yes movement chat. I also wrote this down here in my notes because um, well, he wanted to show some support here. We had the Rollins in between, like throwing a fit because like, I don't need this, and then he just left the ring. Uh, so then was Jay Uso was there alone basically, and Brian hit a running knee to take the victory. That was actually kind of nice because it was a bit longer um, for the TV shows that we usually get. So this is, this is very nice. Um, I'm all for it. I'm all for like those people working each other, like Rain, Cesaro, Brian, Uso. Um, 
Wayne, Cesaro, Brian, Uso, Rollins, Rollins. There you go. Uh, I like that. So that that's a that's a very good WWE match. I have a setting set up if you want to. I appreciate that. That was fun. That was good. So um, yeah, props to WWE. So I'm not only hating. That was nice. What else happened on SmackDown? And I have to look at my notes again because it's been like almost a week now. So we had uh, Tamina versus Nia Jax, pinfall. <sighs> that should be on Raw, so we don't have to talk about it anymore. We had Apollo Crews defeating Kevin Owens via pinfall. That was interesting, but of course, Sami Zayn. <laughs> this has to continue, and usually I'm not a big fan of like prolonging feuds and so on, feuds and so on, but but Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens is of course awesome. So the more we see from this, the better. Um, after the match, actually, we even had, what's, what's his name? Commander, checking my notes, Aziz, um, attacking then Kevin Owens just to show, like, it's a force to be reckoned with, of course. Um, and next week, we see, I also noted this down, the Cruz will defend the IC Championship against Big E one more time. All right, let's see how Big E is going to lose then, probably also via interference. Then we, sh we see an, a vignette for the first time in a long time about Alistair Black. Ah, Alistair Black is still there. Hmm. It's been a while, right? It's been six months or so since we've seen Alistair Black, so apparently he's still there. Uh, we then get another, an, an, uh, another Bailey interview. Bailey said she uh, had plans to, and I quote, take back her SmackDown Women's Championship, my SmackDown Women's Championship, I'm quoting, and defeat Bianca Belair. So this is official for the next pay per view, which is WrestleMania. Backlash. Just attach WrestleMania to everything now. That's WrestleMania, SmackDown, SmackDown after after WrestleMania. Uh, we then saw a lot, also Ray and Dominic Mysterio, Booyaka Booyaka, the Mysterios um, versus Otis and Chad Gable. This time the Mysterios won. Yeah. Nothing much to say about this. Maybe if they're gonna face a uh, Sickland route next. This tag team division on SmackDown is not the greatest right now, unfortunately. So um, let's see where this goes. Again, I'm all. It was decent. I liked um, well the same Owen thing that this continues all for it. Um, I liked the main part of Raw, of Raw of SmackDown. The rest was a bit meh. The women's match, unfortunately, not that exciting. Still better than Raw. <laughs> That's why we're not talking about Raw. So let me know. What do you think? What was your favorite? Are you gonna watch Blood and Guts on <laughs> on May 5th? Are you psyched for WrestleMania backlash? <laughs> Let me know in the comments via social media or by email thunkitpot.gmail.com. Until then, uh, take care, stay safe, and I hope to see you soon.